Hi everyone and welcome to my bookshelf tag video and thank you very much to Amanda at Book Apple Tree for tagging me and thank you again to Amrita by the books for calling me out because she recently tagged me in a different tag and when she did she said I'm not sure if Katya hates tag videos or not I'm gonna try tagging her but I haven't seen her do very many and I thought that was actually a really good thing for her to have said because that allows me to then say I love tag videos please go ahead and tag me I just haven't got round to doing very many of them and that's because I've been thinking that I have to review books and I don't necessarily have to review books I can also do these tag videos which I very much enjoy so I shall certainly be doing more of that this year. Go ahead and tag me, please. Thank you. So when Amanda tagged me, I can see in her video that she said the original tag was by A Wandering Mind. And the first question is, how many bookshelves do you have? Now, I don't necessarily have a whole ton of bookshelves, um, but what I do have is a huge IKEA bookcase. Um, which is in my lounge, which I'm not filming in any longer. So the IKEA book case has got 25 cubes and off of those 25 cubes, I've got books in about 20. So let's go with uh, 20 small shelves, like cubical ones. Um, next, how many books are on your bookshelves? I would say there's about 10 to 11 in each cube. So that's 200 to 220 books physical books. And the reason that is um, perhaps my lowest number of physical books that I've owned uh, in a long time is I had a recent declutter so I can link somewhere up here or somewhere up there to the declutter video that I did. And it's not to say that I decluttered because I'm suddenly against having physical books. It was just that having the uh, digital copies was so much more convenient and I haven't got digital copies of the books that I did used to own purely because I felt the books that I decluttered I had already had the pleasure of, I could remember them. I might end up getting them again in the future, who knows, but at this point someone else can enjoy them. How do you organise your books? So I have tried every way of organising my books. I have gone rainbow um, organisation having the uh, colours um, on the spine matching up and that looked really pretty. I have done the A to Z of the writer's surnames and more recently I have now decided that because of the A to Z I sometimes lose sight of the actual books that I want to read. I have decided for 2021 to have uh, my reading list or my TBR in the top left of my bookshelf. And the reason being is that my eyes tend to gravitate towards the top left. So I'm hoping by doing that, having pulled out all of the books that have been on my to be read list for a very long time, that by putting them in the top left, I'm gonna actually read those ones. And so far, I think it's working. I tend to be quite a mood reader, so if I don't see the books there and have them reminding me, I would be quite tempted to go off and read something entirely different. So I'm just imposing a little bit of organisation into my approach. Number four, what is the oldest book on your bookshelf? So oldest one is probably this collection of short stories by W. Somerset Maugham, um, 65 short stories. And I reckon this particular version is from the 60s. Got its second hand or 10th hand, whichever, um, in a charity shop when we could still <laughs> browse charity shops. I'm looking for how old this is. Yeah, so he was born in 1874, wrote a lot of these in the 1930s died in 1965. This is really odd, like usually these days you would have, ah there we go, I'd missed it and then I closed it, but there we go. So first published in 1976 and this one says copyright 1976. That looks like a first edition for the William Henneman edition. So 
that's the oldest one, 1970s. Right, so next up is what is the newest book on your bookshelf? My newest book is not necessarily um, a book that's been published this year in 2021, we even at the end of last year. So I haven't actually said the name of the book. It's called Kim Ji Yong, born 1982 and written by Cho Nam Ju, translated by Jamie Chang. And I'd been meaning to get it all of last year and then I was sort of trying to impose my book buying ban on myself. Um, and then I finally did decide to get it, which I'm glad because I recently saw a brilliant uh, recommendation for it on gunpowder fiction and plot, which is another booktube channel run by Scott and Nell. I'll link to the um, channel below. I'm checking to see when this one was written. I should really have prepared for this, but I thought I won't bother scripting. Looks like a 2016 book and translated in 2018. So not necessarily very new, but certainly new to me. So next question. What is the longest book on your bookshelf? So um, I think that the Somerset one would be longer, but that's short stories. So I'm going for one story and that is Luminaries by Eleanor Catton and I think this was yeah, 832 pages. I reckon Vanity Fair might be longer because I used to own a copy of Vanity Fair but at the moment the Luminaries is certainly the longest that I have and I absolutely loved this book so I'm going to be reviewing it in the future and I saw a fantastic movie trailer for it as well so I think by reviewing that, maybe having a bit of a reread, although I'm not sure if I'm going to reread the whole lot. And I do find quite a bit of it, I have found it memorable, is what I'm saying. Because I think I read this in 2013, which is almost eight years ago, but I do actually still remember what it's about. So that bodes well for actually doing a review, despite not having read it very recently. And the other thing that I remember about this is that Eleanor Catton, the author, was 28 when she wrote it. And people were saying, this is such a well-crafted novel, plot-wise. And I had to agree because um, she used uh, astrology to actually um, plot the story. So all of the characters are a particular astrological sign. I'm not saying that she necessarily believes in astrology as something that guides everyone's life. I don't know if she does or doesn't. But as a plot or way of plotting and doing character development, it worked really well. So I don't know if you can actually see that, but you've got the character chart in there and she actually um, uses particular locations for the story as um, planetary houses or houses where the planets might move into. So I don't know if, if that means anything to anyone, but I thought it was really clever. And um, yeah, so I would absolutely be interested in watching that movie. And she was lovely. Um, it was a local bookshop signing where I picked up this book. I'm not sure if you can actually see that. Probably not. But she's really a lovely author, um, very personable, talked about her book, did a reading um, of her favourite part of the book, which I can't remember which was her favourite part, but she did her favourite part, and then did the signing and was just such a nice person or seemed like such a nice person. So. That is my longest book on my bookshelf. What is the shortest book on your bookshelf? Now, you might think that I'm cheating. <laughs> but I just thought, I've, I've got, I don't have that many that are very short. <laughs> so, and they're kind of like equal length. Um, I don't know, like 180 something pages. And this one's not far off from that. So I just picked up this one because it's also quite small um, and I got this for free. I thought I'd got it for free with the DVD. So this is the Avatar. Again, I don't think you can really see that. Uh, there we go. So this is the Avatar Act 
Activist Survival Guide. And this is an avatar in terms of The Last Airbender, which again is a fantastic animated series if you're interested in character development and plot. Uh, but this here is the James Cameron movie, <laughs> Survival Guide. So I thought I'd got this um, survival guide with all of the animals that they created for the TV, well, film production. I thought I got that with the DVD, but it turns out I didn't. I got these for free with the DVD, which I didn't find particularly. Well, they seem to be looking better in the camera than when I try and view them. But they're, um, what are those called? Where you can sort of like get the character to move. It's like a 3D trick of the eye sort of thing. So no idea where I actually picked up this um, freebie avatar survival guide, but that is the smallest book on my bookshelf. And somehow I don't want to get rid of it. It just really interests me to think that for one story, the world building included all that detail. So I, I just really like it. So I don't think I'm going to be parting with that one. Next up, what is the predominant genre on your bookshelf? On the bookshelf, it is still fantasy. So I thought it might have um, switched more recently because I'd done my declutter and that most of my sci-fi and fantasy would be digital. But um, no, I have still kept a lot of fantasy. Predominantly, that is actually Brandon Sanderson and Brian McClellan. Yeah, I'm not going to be getting rid of those. So I'm a fan. I, I do like his whole world building of like um, French Revolution era type um, <laughs> army uh, people who can actually use gunpowder as a form of magic so they can increase their stamina and strength by snorting gunpowder. It is actually really good. It's a great adventure story. I'm a fan of the original, which is very much a fantasy version of the French Revolution, um, obviously with more uh, detail around it and you've got other magic in it too. And the second one is even better, I feel. I haven't finished the spin-off series. God, I'm really rambling, but the spin-off series, I haven't even gone back to the question, right? <laughs> so I'll go back to the question, but the spin-off series is really, really good. Um, and that kind of reminds me of uh, almost like the American Civil War. So th there's certainly, you know, like him following that whole theme of revolution. So anyway, back to the questions. Um, so predominant genre, yes, fantasy, still on my bookshelf. It is starting to get leveled out a little bit with more classics, nonfiction. And that's because I'm intending to reread a lot of the classics that I used to read when I was um, actually in my late teens, early 20s. So um, getting back into Austen and Dickens and all of that. and. Also, the nonfiction is part of the book groups that I've joined. So I was interested to read a little bit more of that. And that's been an interesting experience. So I'm broadening the genres that I tend to read. Have you done a bookshelf tour? No, I've not done a bookshelf tour and I won't, oh, actually maybe I have. Maybe I have in that declutter book uh, shelf thingy that I talked about. <laughs> no in terms of actually doing a bookshelf tour video. And yes, in terms of I've done a tour because it was part of my declutter video. So both, I guess. Go on a random number generator and talk about the book that corresponds with that number. I'd forgotten that. I do remember now that people did that. Okie doke, so I'm gonna have to come back one second. So number 48 is what I got, and that is Half a War. So that's the 48th book on my bookshelf. I haven't read it yet. Um, so I read the first one, which was Half a King. And the second one is Half the World. And this is the final one in the series, Half a War. They are from the Shattered Seas trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. And I was really lucky because when this third one came out, he came um, to our local bookshop again and did a signing. <coughs> and I do remember um, that signing really well because I had just um, 
sort of a few months earlier gone to a signing where I'd met um, Neil Gaiman and just he just automatically drew a little um, diagram in his book which was like a little bat flying out of a bucket sort of thing. I thought that was really cool so <laughs> when I found out that I was the last person or second last person in this queue um, for the local bookshop I thought well great no one's <laughs> no one's waiting behind me maybe I can ask Joe Abercrombie to do a little doodle. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked so shocked. Um, so, you know, advice to self, don't necessarily ask, you know, writers, authors to um, doodle, let them do it themselves. But he was so nice. He just looked like really surprised, like, what does that have to do with um, writing sort of thing? <laughs> but he, he was so, so cool. He just went, oh, okay. <laughs> It was just like that facial expression where you're kind of going, oh, this poor man, he must be so tired from doing all of these book signings. And along I come and go, oh, could you do us a little doodle in your book? So he did. Anyway, there we go. He did a sword doodle, which I think was, you know, really well done because after he'd done it, he said, oh, I'm not really an artist sort of thing. I'm not very good at drawing, but I think that's, you know, really good job. That's a better sword than I can draw. So thank you very much to Joe Abercrombie. So question 11, do you have any fan merch or any other decorations on your bookshelf? And the answer to that is no, I would love to have loads of Funko Pops, but I also don't like having to dust them. And I don't necessarily want to have too many things in the house again. So if I let myself, I would get loads and loads of Funko Pops, probably Umbrella Academy and Star Trek. Um, I really like the Star Trek one for Michael, um, Michael Burnham, so that, that would have been a recent buy and then perhaps the older buys would have been uh, number five and um, number four in the uh, Umbrella Academy. <laughs> and of course, Klaus, <laughs> who is number four. So in effect, the only decoration that I do have on my shelves, and these are not actually on Ikea shelves, they um, hold together some of my workbooks, which I haven't been really counting here. So I've got that on the bookshelves over here. And those are my little pugs from my sister. So I got those, oh, I don't know if you can see, there we go, that's one of them. I got those for Christmas about six years ago, I think. And absolutely love them, especially since I haven't had a dog of my own in quite a while now. And I absolutely love dogs. Um, pugs I love. Um, probably wouldn't get a pug myself, but um, I, I've, I tended to have dogs that aren't necessarily pure breed. So I'm not particularly fussy. I mean, <laughs> I would have a pug in a heartbeat, um, but that's more around it being a really uh, good time to have a dog and look after them, which I think, you know, obviously is during lockdown, but um, coming out of lockdown, uh, there's probably going to be quite a few dogs looking for new homes. Number 12, show us your bookshelf. And finally, it's to tag people. And the first person I'm tagging is Katrina at Polynesian Reader. 
and Katrina's booktube channel says she is of Polynesian descent hailing from Nui and Cook Island. I hope I said that right. My channel will consist, she says, of indigenous books and fantasy as well. If you ever come across my channel, please come by and say hi and don't forget to subscribe. So Polynesian reader, you're my first tag. And the next person I'm tagging is Yere at uh, Drawn to Stories. And I'm trying to remember, I'll have to go to his channel because I'm tempted to say that he's in Norway. I know it's a Scandinavian country that he's in, but I might be wrong. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm so sorry. So he's from Finland. And do go ahead to Drawn to Stories. Um, he's a new... <laughs> booktuber. I'm going to pronounce his name as Yere and he says feel free to butcher my name in any way you like. I don't mind. So I'm glad that he said that on his channel description. So those are the two people I'm tagging today and thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye.